Lace up those boots and stretch those glutes. It's time for the Wrestling Compadres with your hosts, Dale Rutledge, Scott Narva and Jake Lloyd. It is your favorite time of the week, time for Wrestling Compadres. I am Jake Lloyd, along with Scott Narva. Say hi, Scott. Hello. And a very special thing. That's all I get to say for this week. Yep, that's it. Bye. You talked a lot last week. I'm limited. Talked a lot last week, and we're cutting you off. A very special thank you to our official compadres announcer, uh, Mickey James. Listen, you weren't drafted to either Raw or SmackDown, so we did you a favor and drafted you to the wrestling compadres announcer spot. Uh, Excellent job. Uh, Really wasn't expecting uh, such a baritone. She hangs out with her husband too much. You know how like Madonna went to England for a while and then she came back and she sounded British. Right. Her husband, Nick Aldis. Boy, it just, you hang around someone too long. You just sound just like him. Yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense. Um, Scott, thank you so much for holding the fort down last week. Excellent job doing a show all by yourself. Me and you now are the only two people who have ever done a compadres by ourselves. Uh, although I cheated, True. you took live phone calls. I cheated. Though. Yeah, yeah. I cheated by having on a variety of people. Yeah, with your tech savviness, you were able to do so. Yeah, with my tech lackiness, I had to yammer on. Um. Well, listen, it was fantastic. You are uh, not only a sport. What was your favorite part? But a delight. Oh, my favorite part was when you said that thing about that one hotline call where the guy was all like, hey, what about this? And you were like, this is what I think. Oh, it was so good. Yeah. 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 It was that's, yeah. What was their name? It was my favorite. Oh, it was, uh, it was Bosh Bachmanses. Mm, yeah. First time caller. Yeah. First time caller. Yeah. 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 First time long time. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah, great job. You nailed it. I, I, I feel it. I feel like it did. How really do did. you, uh, how did you feel when it was over? Did you feel like, well, I just talked to myself for, <laughs> for three hours. Cause I also, by the way, was not expecting a pre-show last week when you were like, it's just going to be me. Dale can't make it either. I'll send you the files. I was like, all right, I'll, I'll get it up. No worries. And then you were like also a pre-show. And I was like, wait, <laughs> you did it. You caught up for yourself with the week. I almost did a watch along. Oh, <laughs> that would have been uh, fantastic. I mean, I was like, I could just do the whole week. I just, I'm ready. I'm set. I'm fired up. Let's do it. Let's be honest. When you do one with me, you're pretty much just talking to yourself anyway. Mm-hmm. That's where the jokes go. Um, but anyways, I'm happy to be back. Uh, I had a bunch of work last week. Fortunately, couldn't make it, but uh, I did a little little catching up. I saw a little wrestling. I did not, uh, I did not see like what happened in previous weeks, <laughs> but I did just watch this week's shows. So at least I'm uh, for the most part aware of what's going on. You left. Lars Sullivan arrived. Good things happened. The world balanced itself out, Jake. So you're saying that I, he, and I have the same value. What I mean is people missed you and they miss like, well, what happens if Jake's not here? What, what, what's going to be? How can we still get something good in this world? <gasps> Lars Sullivan showed up. Things are all right. And then you returned and now we get both. We get both. Yeah, I, I don't know what to say to that other than I'm sorry. I don't know. Um, anyways, we got a lot to chat about this week. Obviously, uh, not just the ongoings of this week in kayfabe, but Slamcast News. Eva Marie in the news. That wasn't a name I expected to see really ever again. But uh, 2020 continues to 2020. And uh, Eva Marie set to make her return to WWE. Apparently, a deal was reached on the week of September 20th. Uh, Scott, you added this to our news. Uh, do you have anything more to add to this? Like, we're, we're, we're finally my Funko Pop of Eva Marie is going to be relevant again. <laughs> it is weird that that's the only one you've kept in the box. It's the only one. Because uh, sometimes when I try and showcase it, then the top falls off and I'm like, oh no, look, it's, it's, it's opening. And 
then it can't be on the shelf because of the mishap. Right. I'm all for it. I'm all for it. I was liking Eva Marie and when she was on SmackDown Live and they were doing the thing of it was that announcer doing yep. that big build up and then she'd have the mishaps and she couldn't wrestle and she, while she may not be a great wrestler, she was a fun character. She was really and great. Was a to, good performer. She was really great to boo. Like it was fun yeah. booing her and that was the best version of her because she was we were booing her because she was doing something smarmy, not because she was bad at her job. And that's mm-hmm. why, like, don't try to bring her back as a baby face or a serious heel. I think her best her best mode is somebody that we laugh at. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it, that so with a way that she's in on it, not in like a mean bully way. Yeah, yeah. I, I think she's got some some decent uh, acting chops as right. far as all that. I know she did a movie with Nicolas Cage when she was gone. And I was like, I should maybe check that out. But I never did. But hey, you won't come back to WWE for a while. Great. If she's someone that shows up every so often. Great, fine. There should be more people like that. They don't need to stay on forever, and right. like I do all the houses. Look, people are dying to see you. Like, yeah, and whatever. Right, come and go. Um, uh, your favorite WWE contributor, Sam Roberts, Scott Narver, is uh going to be hosting Not Sam Wrestling on WWE Network every Thursday. It's uh, he tweeted about it. He says it's not just a video version of the podcast, but a completely original uh new show. So not sure what to expect there. I'm not, I don't dislike the guy. I, I'm not a huge fan. I don't, I don't listen to his stuff, um, but, but that doesn't mean I dis, like, dislike him. I, I, don't, I don't mind when he's on a pre-show I, I, you know, or something like that. So uh, if you're into Sam Roberts, then uh, you got some more Sam coming your way by way of WWE Network. I'm hosting an after show for this show. You're hosting an after show for, for Sam or for not for Sam Wrestling? For not Sam Wrestling. Oh, wow. It's called Not Watching. Not, not Watch Not Sam? Mm-hmm. not sam not not watch sam there you go not watch sam wrestling mm-hmm. uh fantastic uh, I, yeah i don't i don't really know the guy i met him a handful of times and i, I don't know there, there's just not anything about this where it's like oh well i gotta watch sam talk about this like i right. i do this in a smaller sense already so yeah i don't need his take on it it is always weird like i was excited to hear when they were doing that show with the other contributor whose name I can't remember, but when it was like, oh, every week, uh, Paul Heyman's also going to be there. That I was like, yeah, that's fun. Like, I want to see Paul Heyman dip in and out of kayfabe and give his thoughts on the product. Um, I can't think of that gentleman's name. I feel bad. Uh, you know, I know. And I I know guy. who you're talking about. He's the Bob Heenan fan. He's yeah. got the Bob Heenan jackets. Yep, yep. And I can totally picture him. And he's on ESPN. And I'm I'm looking it up, but. But I can't, even, find think, it at some I point can't even think of the name of the WWE show either. Something about the table. Oh, with him, JBL. and Yeah, um, that's what I'm talking about. Where I was like, that's interesting. The sports beca- type one. Yeah, that's interesting because under the table or on the table? Under the table sounds dirty. Um, <laughs> I wish it was under the table. On the table? I don't know. Anyways, so that's happening. Um, so I have a question for you while we're in Slamcast News. Do you sure. believe that over time a title can become cursed? A WWE or, or a, a pro wrestling rather championship can become cursed. Certainly do. Well, uh, in the in the spooky season of Halloween, the NXT title has decided to just go full blown cursed. Um, Finn Balor uh, apparently uh, dual fractures to his jaw. Now I don't know when this happened. I've been gone for the week. I don't know if this happened takeover uh, at, at takeover. Okay. So I'm late to that news that it happened. The news that we're reporting this week is that he underwent uh, a very successful surgery to repair the, the dual fractured jaw posted a picture of himself just looking jacked. Um, and what I assume is just on a ton of pain meds. Uh, I don't know how long something like that's going to take him out for. It's not, I don't, I think it's the kind of thing that they would let him wrestle on sooner than a limb or a joint in that sense, like, a, you know, a shoulder or an elbow. Um, I mean, they've, they've let people wrestle with fracture jaws previously, as well as with like ocular fractures, but different time. Yeah. But he's a, he's the NXT champ. And so uh, when we talk about NXT later, we'll talk about how that's going to go. Um, and uh, Poorly. <laughs> more NXT uh, champions. Uh, former, at least, 
in the uh, out with injury sort of thing. Although I don't know if this is an injury. It's all very vague. Andrade will be undergoing a, quote, minor elective procedure. And because of so, will be Ooh. because of so, will be Rest out. Enhancement? I, I, that's what I was thinking. I think he's getting a boob job. I think he's getting, a you know, boob he's job. with Charlotte. You, you got to go tit for tat. Man, I can't even add to that joke. Just fucking excellent. Chef's kiss. Um, although maybe you go tat for tit in that, in that instance, that uh, doesn't matter. We don't, it's, we're not workshopping it. You nailed it. I, I didn't mean to give you a note. Um, in any case, Andrade posted a picture on Twitter uh, of him as NXT champion, just un. And I think he just wrote like hashtag uh, Elite Low or the Idol or whatever. And it's probably just him posting a picture of himself because it's not something that we don't all do. But of course, because it's wrestling, it sparked this massive online rumor mill and speculation that when he returns, he's going to be heading back to NXT. Hmm. He is also one of only two people who were in the uh, the talent pool, according to WWE, who were not drafted, him and Mickey James, were the only two who were in the, quote, talent pool. Um, mm-hmm. Not necessarily people who are employed and on the rosters on the website, because that's a whole other list, which we could talk about later, but people who were supposed to be drafted, according to WWE, who were not. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that's, that's, that's tricky, because... You know, they they were saying that, oh, the, the NXT wasn't involved in all that. And right. then some people just kind of did this self uh, proclamation of, right. you know, like an Ember Moon went like, I'm no, fuck it. I'm going there when the people in charge, uh, you know, uh, don't say or do anything right. to the contrary. So you right. go, I guess you can just do whatever. Peter Rosenberg. Peter, Peter Rosenberg. Rosenberg. There it is. And what was the name of that show? Um... Do me on the table. Do me under the table, right? With JBL and uh, Paul Heyman, the two Paul people, Heyman. the two people you most want to be involved in a show called Do Me Under the Table. Yeah, that's right. I'm um, now googling Peter Rosenberg table show. Oh boy. Well, uh, in any case, I don't think it's a bad idea for him to go, but also it doesn't matter. It's all the same now. And if Finn's, I don't, I don't know. Who knows? I don't know also how long Bring it's going to be on to for. the table. Bring it to the table. There we go. I had one word, right? And then do me under it. And then br- bring bring the table with, over here. With not Sam. I think it's called Devon. Get the tables. Bring it over here. Do me under the table. Not with Sam. Right. WWE Network. Um, Exclusive. Yeah, uh, what else we got? Speaking of WWE Network, segue... WWE Network Documentaries, that's the name of the company, uh, is bringing the world premiere of Brothers of Destruction to the Austin Film Festival. It is actually going to be a part what? of the, the closing night, the closing night uh, festivities. That's Stone Cold Steve Austin's backyard yeah. in which he has a projector and he watches Roadhouse and then this movie. Oh, uh, I could see him being a huge Roadhouse fan. It's got Terry Funk in it. Of course he is. Yeah. Uh, this is fun. I'm actually, uh, you know, it's a little bittersweet. Uh, I don't know that this festival is going to be a, conti- it's going to be an in-person festival. I think it's going to be like a lot of film festivals this year have been online festivals, which is, which is a little bit of a luster stealer um, because obviously the fun of the festival is being there in person, having a bunch of people see this. But I do like that, like, it's weird to me. We live in a world where documentaries about random shit become super popular, yet non-wrestling fans don't see wrestling documentaries as something that they would be interested in. But it's Right. And also they're a content machine and they're making stuff like crazy, so right. they cheated by being able to put together all the talking heads and right. all the footage from ever and go, uh, "Let's just enter in a legit film festival right. when legit documentary filmmakers are like um, there's a fucking disease. We can't go and film our subjects and do this. Right. Oh, son of a bitch. Wrestling got in. Fuck. But, yeah. I mean, sure. That is a one way to look at it, but also excited. <laughs> I don't know. I like, I'm just glad that a uh, WWE documentary is, you know, going to be featured prevalently in a thing that's probably traditionally not a space they occupy. But we haven't seen it yet. I don't know if it's one of the good ones. It's uh, yes, I, ideally it, it is, but it's like the brothers. It's not. 
It's not last ride. No, but I feel like they've just gotten better. Like, I think, like, uh, we even, not that long ago, Alexandra, not super familiar with CM Punk, wanted to, like, learn more about him. So we watched Best in the World. And that it, does, it wasn't that long ago that that came out. But it was six years ago, maybe? Seven years ago? Yeah. Not that long ago, but man, it's so dated. It feels like a WWE made documentary. Whereas the stuff that has been coming out in the past four or five years from the network even has felt really well made. I think they've they've learned how but to even, shoot. Even the CM Punk one was a a departure from how they normally made it. Exactly. Them. I think it was an evolution of you know, their ability to make a documentary. I think they've just gotten better. They've, I feel like maybe they've hired people who are like, no documentarians versus, Hey, let's let the WWE production team put this together where everything feels like highlight head, highlight talking head. Like there's, you know, and it's, I feel like for a while, every single W documentary was just like, here's video footage of a photo in a frame that we're going to slowly pan by while we talk over it. And then we're going to show you a video. And that's the extent of what you see. But I feel like they've gotten really good at showing us, experiences happening in real time in their lives. They've learned to just roll cameras all the time. That's the benefit because mm -hmm. of, because of shows like WWE 24 and 365. I think they're just rolling cameras a lot and that adds so much more to a documentary, you know? So it does. Um, anyways, what time is it? Yeah, Can we talk about some awful people for a while? Yeah. Let's talk about some awful people for a while. Okay. Joey Ryan Ugh. files a $10 million breach of contract lawsuit against Impact Wrestling. This is his second lawsuit. He did. Uh, he filed another one last week against, against uh, the people who spoke out against him yeah. in the speaking out movement. So PW Insider first reported Tuesday that Ryan Joe Meehan filed a $10 million lawsuit against Impact Wrestling's parent company, Anthem Sports Entertainment, in mid-September alleging breach of contract for firing him due to allegations of both sexual abuse and assault. Anthem has until Saturday, October 24th, to respond to the suit that was filed in Nashville, Tennessee, which uh, they have reached out. Uh, the PW Insiders reached out for comment, but they have not received any response yet from it. Um, this dude is f asking for so much fucking money in these lawsuits, which I guess is the best thing possible because no one's ever going to hire him again. Right. I don't know. I mean, like, like you had a you you had a breach of contract, and uh, from what I read too, his contract expired next year. So, so to ask for right. ten million, I think is that thing of uh, like, oh, for uh, for damages, right, and for this and that, and having sit, uh, sat in the crowd for many a time to try and uh, earn money at uh, to eat when living in LA for judge Judy boy, do judges not like those extra right? Well, my, I was damaged or yeah. this, that like, did you actually take damage? Do you have medical bills? Is right. there photos of damage to your home or something like, right. no, then get that the fuck out of here. Yeah. And that seemingly angers judges. Like he might win this lawsuit, not on the, uh, not under the 10 million claim, but the judge might be like, yeah, f pay him the rest of his contract. And right. that's and that pay him out for the rest of the year and then be done with it. Yeah, but I don't but $10 know. Ten million dollars. I don't know what these lawyers where they're inflating all of these because the other ones for millions of dollars yeah, yeah. against those people and stacking up all these claims of like I made this much money during a fucking pandemic. Like, what are you talking about? You know, I, I do think it is one of those things though that the likelihood that there is something in the anthem contract that specifies their ability to end the contract prematurely based on X, Y, and Z is probably there. Like they're probably protected from this. Like this is probably going to end up in their favor, in Anthem's favor, because they're the employer and the employer always ends up with the upper hand in these sorts of contracts. Um, but, you know, WWE, if you don't think that WWE doesn't have shit in their contract that says like, we withhold the right to, you know, uh, to, uh, uh end this contract at any time we see fit. If any of your actions go against, you know, WWE standards and practices or shit like that. I got the thing. You want me to oh, read it? Yeah. Let's I read left it. it out just cause I didn't know it was, if it was too much jargon, but okay, let's, let's dive according in. to the contract language. And this is again reported from them. According to the contract language, nothing could be worked out by the wrestler in five days 
he uh oh wait wait let me go back a little bit so uh okay Ryan's contract ran through August 2021. So my mistake on the on the time there. And Impact released him on June 22nd. Based on language in the contract regarding warning and reprimands, he claims they need to inform him of any issue in writing. Who the fuck does that in wrestling? Along with a five-day cure period, as it states in the contract. According to the contract language, if nothing could be worked out by the wrestlers in five days, he and Impact would then have 30 days to resolve any issues. At that point, Impact could have terminated the deal another 30 days after that if there was still unresolvable issues. Yeah, that to me, that to me might actually be bad on Anthem's part because that those are the sort of fine print and semantics that get people in trouble. Is that sort of like you didn't follow the proper protocol? What? (laughs) That's what I want to know in the wrestling world. Like, who put in the contract? Like, there will be some sort of written warning i don't know who the fuck has ever done that who who in wrestling has ever been like here's your write-up what but what is this it's it, because it's wrestling they probably just like downloaded a form contract off of like you know what's that really popular like <laughs> legalzoom.com or some shit like that like right. you know like it might have just been something that was some sort of like pre-made uh contract but i don't know well, so he's a he's a garbage human being. And then Alberto Del Rio. Oh, more garbage human beings in the news. Yeah, two people I would be fine with not seeing in wrestling anymore. Alberto Del Rio indicted on May kidnapping uh, and sexual assault, assault charges. So that's a whole thing. If you've read that story, that's all kinds of disgusting. So I know we talk about on the show like, hey, we want the benefit of the doubt, you know, innocent until proven guilty. There's a lot that's compiled on both of these humans at this point for it to just be coincidental. Um, you know, the first offense might be something where you're like, oh, all right, well, I'm going to keep an eye on this person. But Alberto's got a history of garbage. Joey Ryan's now got a history of this stuff. Like Alberto's stuff, this this story is vile. It yeah. is really vile. I don't know if you want me to read it or if you read it, but nope. it's... No, I think we can uh, spare our listeners... Um, it's the, you know, if you're interested, I'm sure you could easily find it via a Google search, but it's, it's awful and he's awful. And it, it's not, it's one of those I, things where we're not surprised. That's the sad part. I'll say this, this is the, you know, post the stuff that he did, you know, that he was a, alleged to have done or said, and both, cause there's, they're both quite hefty. If convicted of the aggravated kidnapping charge alone, he faces a minimum sentence of five years with a maximum of life in prison. And for the sexual assault charges, he faces a minimum of two years to a maximum of 20 years if convicted. In both cases, fines would be up to $10,000. So, Oh, my goodness. Ain't no small potatoes. No. And boy, no they're rumored potatoes. to bring him back again in WWE. I hope that fucking... Wait, is that was a bed. rumor? Oh yeah, yeah it was a rumor be, a little while back. That's gotta be over now. I'm sure. I but, hope. I mean, no listen, more. WWE. It's not like they don't have a history of uh, keeping people employed. That we go, mm, that person's still employed. Or um, giving out a, a annual award. <laughs> right. Um, a couple of other little quick things here in the news. We're running a little bit over our news dedicated time, but uh, I don't know when you said. We we're going to talk about a bunch of awful people. I don't know if you were including this person in that group because <laughs> uh, I know how much you love her. I, I do legitimately love her. Uh, Bailey tops the PWI Women's 100 for the year. Uh, the top five women are all WWE, uh, which I thought was interesting. You know who the top male is, right? Uh, no. It's Moxley. So how much does this list mean to you? I don't know what you mean by that. How much? Oh, oh, I get what you're saying. Right, right, right. Okay. Um, well, the top 20 here, let's see here. Well, maybe we'll do the top 10. 20 is a lot. The top 10 for the year are uh, from 10 to one. Uh, Mayu Iwatani, who I'm not familiar with. Uh, Io Shirai, Rio, Tessa Blanchard, Hikaru Shida, Sasha Banks. We're at five now. Charlotte Flair, Asuka, Becky Lynch, and Bailey. 
So the, the top five are all WWE's top women. And then uh, six, uh, you got Hikaru at six. So you'll, there's only two that are AEW women here. Um, but, you know, it tracks them from October 2019 through October 2020. Which is a little weird that honestly, like that even Becky's there because she spent most of that time or half of it out. But I guess... And then yeah. half, half of part of those, like Shayna Baszler had an amazing first half of that. Right, yeah. And all the accomplishments and then so did Rhea Ripley. And right. then the second half, they, you go, well, that was pretty dog shit. Yeah, so. Rhea, Rhea and Shayna are, are just barely missed the top 10. Uh, Shayna's 13, Jordan Grace is 12, and Rhea is 11. So they're all right, right there. But I can't, you know, when I look at the top 20 and I see the names like, you know, Nyla Rose, Kaylee Ray, Kylie Ray, which are back to back. That's not confusing at all. Nikki Cross, you got Thunder Rosa in there. Like these are all the top names in the industry. It, I remember when the PWI 500 was such a big deal. I remember thinking like, yeah, the top like 50 of this 500 are all interchangeable. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, do with this information what you will. But I do think that it's still an honor to be named number one. And I'm proud of, of Bailey. And I know that uh, she gets a lot of shit on this show. Um, I, I, I do enjoy her. And I think she's uh, uh, she's good at what she does when she's doing the right thing. Uh, and so there's that. And, and then uh, somebody got married. Who got who got married? John Cena got married to his girlfriend. Oh. Shay Sharari Sade. You nailed it. I mean, I don't know. You try it. Well, do I know what happened? What happened was is he was jealous. He's not trying it. Nikki Bella met that dude, and his name is unpronounceable. And he was like, I could also marry somebody whose name we can't pronounce. And it just became like a competition. It's still, there's still, there's still a lot of post breakup stuff happening here. Sharia, it's a day. That'd be my guess. Uh, it's Cena now. Okay. It's Shay Cena. Uh, they were married in a ceremony in Tampa, Florida earlier this week. Secret ceremony. Hope that it was a small secret ceremony because Tampa is a hotbed of COVID-19. Well, or All it's only, you could only come if you had COVID. Oh, it's a COVID exclusive. Yeah, because then what's going to happen? Are they all going to keep getting sick? No, they're all sick. That uh, seems like a really weird way to end Slamcast News, but that'll do it for this week's Slamcast News. What a marriage! A wonderful marriage of two people uniting. He's well, happy. Play the He's song happy now. Play the song, DJ. A lot of people don't know that we have a DJ who plays all the music for us. We do. Yeah. His, uh, uh, TJP is our DJ. <laughs> he was the first wrestler I could think of that looks like a DJ. I couldn't come up with it, literally anybody else. Not DJ Z. DJ Z. DJ Z. Uh, Not Joaquin Wild. Oh, Joaquin Wild sounds like a DJ as well. Cause, cause he was a DJ. Oh, was he? See, I didn't know that. Yeah. Burr, 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 all that yeah uh speaking of burr, 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 uh it was aw dynamite's one year anniversary today or not today this week today specifically uh yesterday at the time of this recording or that's when they celebrated anyway so yeah they had a the a show they and did they have showed a show. the, the the highlights of the entire year in picture in picture which was fucking weird that's two weeks in a row now where they've done super bizarre picture in picture moments with Cody and um, Brody Lee doing the big table spot in picture in picture. And then this week was, here's our celebration of the year with no audio and in a little box. There was, there was also that bizarre moment on commentary where uh, Shivani... Shivani Shivani says, like, listen, you know, we had no we we could never expect the pandemic our first year being on the air. And we could have very easily just shown you old matches. We could have very easily just played you with the product that we already had and not brought a live show. But we want to bring a live show to you. And then Jay just immediately uh, Jay, Jr. rather just immediately just stomps on him and goes like, yeah, so we're uh, we're showing a bunch of old matches tonight. <laughs> it was like really awkward. And I kind of like got lost in what was happening there. But here's the thing is, I don't think that that picture in picture was prevalent in the 
version that I watched in the the one on the uh, the TNT app because I don't remember mm-hmm. this. Yeah, I don't I don't remember what segment it was before it, but I remember watching that going. You know, I'd really actually like to see this and hear this. I don't know why right. you couldn't cut a minute and a half from anything on the show to show that. Right. As much as I want to enjoy Sean Spears and I do like Scorpio Sky, that video package could have just been omitted because it didn't make sense. So we could have celebrated the year instead. Yeah, yeah. Especially that late in the program where that one fell. That was a good spot for it. But um, yeah, an interesting episode coming back to it after not watching for a couple of weeks. Um, for me, highlight has got to be MJF wanting to join the inner circle and him and Jericho just in the ring with live mics being ridiculous. Uh, kind of sort of maybe potentially possibly uh, maybe wanted to join the inner circle. I loved him constantly turning around and being like, just say it, Max, just do it. You could do this. Uh, or I lose my smile. No, oh, stupid. Yeah. Stupid. Lose it. <laughs> yes. Really good. Little, Cause that, I think that one almost got Jericho to break. Cause he smiled. Yeah. There was a few um, moments. Yeah. It's uh, I don't have confirmation on this. I know he was a choir kid. Uh, MJF. I don't know if he was a theater kid, but man, does it read that he does, that he was, you know, that he was a a young performer because only people like that put together that like maybe possibly kind of right, like he's yeah. working on the alliteration and the rhymes and yeah. just doing all that. Like he, he is so good and the, the pride getting in his way of asking to be in the inner circle has gotten him for weeks. And I don't know if you'd seen any of those segments where, so he's trying to butter up inner circle and give them jackets, but he didn't have Sammy's. Yeah. And then it was for a couple of weeks. Like I promise I'm going to get it to you, buddy. No problem. And Sammy is constantly mad at MJF. And then finally he delivers him the jacket. It's huge. Sammy doesn't want to put it on. And Jericho was saying, put it on. It's a gift. And it's gigantic, and him even go like, "See, little buddy, fits like a glove." Yeah, <laughs> it's like that was great. I did feel like that was for Wardlow, like that jacket is so big. Uh, nice touch. Yeah, there was some fun moments in that whole thing. Him asking to touch his hair, just so weird. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and I, I mean, I hope that it's going the way of him joining, and it's being, and there being a story there. Um, because I don't know that them facing each other is something I really care to see. Like it would be fun, but it's it's one of those weird things where they're both sort of TV heels, but we like both of them, yeah. so it's odd. I I only I'd only want to watch one of them fight if one is a heel, one is yeah. a baby face. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to see them both as heels fight yeah. each other. I'm all for them if they were to do a tag thing, yeah, or something where it's a big elimination thing, and then they are on a multi man team against each other and then they have to be like oh but you're my buddy like i don't want to fight you and they tag out um and i do like that there's it's a setup like the contention among the inner circle where like Mm -hmm. uh, santana i was like no i don't want you in this like nobody wants you here but jericho's open to it and they're gonna have a steak dinner they're gonna have la dinner debonair you want to go one-on-one Next week, <laughs> it's, it's very good. And they ended it like it was ang- like they were angry, like it was a wrestling promo ending. Hmm. Uh, that's gonna. Be it's fun. got me intrigued. The question is, is are they gonna try to rent out one of the many many restaurants <laughs> that is probably desperate for business to take their money, or are they gonna do a WWE style? There's a restaurant. Oh, there's probably something at Daly's place that is just a restaurant that they could probably shoot at. I just realized. Yeah, because they have the bar. Yeah, they have the bar. Yeah, I just realized. So they'll probably make it look nice. Yeah, I, I, w- I would think so. I don't I don't think they'll do it that other way. Right on. I think I think it'll look good. But did you here's one thing I, that caught my eye that I just laughed at and it was for all the wrong reasons. The f- I think it might have been the first. I don't know. I feel like maybe it happened throughout the episode. The first time that like Lance Archer is in the back just beating the crap out of John Moxley and everybody's trying to break up. Did you catch Jake the Snake like holding the the vest? <laughs> Like he was trying and seemingly saying like, can you help me put it on or, or like he wanted to put it on someone else. Like it looked like he was trying to dress a toddler. Like he was, he was trying to put, I was so confused by what he was doing. 
Yeah, they're they're. I don't. Uh, Is he just losing? It's it? been my issue lately. With I, I don't know why these these one takes are happening, or no one's going. So I need you to do this, right? And you to do this, and you to do this. Now we'll do the thing. But when something like that happens, go. Okay, we're gonna do it again because yeah. we're trying to focus on him beating the shit out of Moxley, right? And you doing this vest thing is taking doesn't all help. Away. Yeah, and you know so we're doing I, it again. I've had I've said this since the beginning of AEW where like we all we complain about how like WWE is overscripted to the point where they suck humanity out of it, right? Uh, and then you've got AEW, which sometimes is so raw and unpolished that it looks amateur because it's you know like we said things that become distracting because people don't know how to rein in you have to find that line aw with a lot of their stuff that happens not in ring or even some of the in ring stuff i don't know we got to figure out a way to like it's only certain people i feel like you got to figure out a way to reel people in yeah it's all the old school people it's not, who struggle it's well mm, no that's not true yeah it's, you're right you're i'd right. say it's the elite that uh okay. do this because you can see it in their show oh yeah sure that's fair because yeah, that's what it's all about. It's like the members of the elite and a, and a lot of the AW roster are the like the person who you don't want like in your improv troupe. <laughs> you know, like they're the people who don't know when to hand the ball off and be quiet for a minute or to add mm-hmm. just enough of something. It's always 100% all the time. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm going to do this thing too because... That'd be funny. Like, yeah, uh, it wouldn't be because right. there's something else going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Jake, Jake waving that, <laughs> waving that fucking vest around like he was a bullfighter <laughs> with a fucking cape was just really funny to me. Because it wasn't. It didn't read as the the guys are coming up and trying to break up the fight. The referees and everybody right. and him throwing it on them, going like, "Why don't you just get out of here and mind your own business?" He wasn't right. doing that. Which no. I thought, well, that would make sense. No, it's we see him in the next segment. Well, now he's wearing his vest. Right. Oh, that's cute. He got it on. So uh, uh, what else was big? Oh, I so I missed last week. Did Cody we re-dye his hair last week? Or was this him back to blonde for the first time this week? No, he was blonde um, like three weeks ago. Wait, no, I think it was only two. Oh, wait. Yeah, you're right. It was two weeks ago because... We recorded that one episode last one I was on a day early. So we had, to re- yeah, when he returned right. um, and actually it's, it might be three weeks ago. No, that I think that was his return with the brunette, with the brunette. And then the following week he was, uh, he, uh, no, am I wrong? All right. doesn't matter. Irrelevant. Yeah. Came this back is the with first a new time. Color, Cause this then it was addressed in his it. promo. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. uh, uh, I actually am a little bummed. I was like excited to see him with the dark hair for a little while, but it seemed like that was just a one and done shock value. Well, then you can watch the big, 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 big show with no big show. Wait, they what? should just call that show. They have the not Sam wrestling. Okay. They should call it not big show show. I'm lost. The game show, the talent show that he's a host in. Got it. Got it. That's what I'm referring to. I Now I get your reference. But uh, him versus uh, Orange Cassidy, super fun. Yeah, I still think wrong opponent uh, wasn't. It wasn't right. We just saw an Orange Cassidy fight, uh, Brody Lee, a couple weeks ago, and other than him showing up, like it di- it didn't feel like the right opponent for this right time. And it was okay. I like that Cody does the time limit draws. But then he's going to fight again in two weeks anyway. And then he's fighting Darby Allen at full gear yeah. or technically whoever the champion is. Right. So I don't know. I get that they're cashing in on the, the popularity of Orange Cassidy, but I feel like Cassidy should be doing something else right now. Uh, yeah. I don't and know Cody that he should be having these other opponents. I just don't know that he needed the good match with Cody. Like we're already in on him. He's already given us that with Jericho and other people. Uh, where we went like, wow, this guy can can actually go. This feels like the sort of thing that like, like for example, what Sonny Kiss got a couple months ago. Like, I think that was really good for Sonny Kiss to get that match, mm-hmm. even though we still like, we already like Sonny Kiss. I think to get that match was like, oh yeah, you know what? You got beat, but it was the great outing 
And I think that upped Sonny Kiss's profile. Whereas I think that this just did, it was just the same, I guess. It was like, still a good match. Like, it was fun watching wrestle, but I was like, did it, do you think it hurt Orange Cassidy? Well, to me, it's just, it, it just reeks a bang of the line, buddy. You already sure. did this. You did this. Yeah. You did this. Fair. And um, also, I don't want to see Cody fight all of the faces. Right, right. I want to see him fight more heels overall. Right. And have have that continue on um where i want to cheer for cody more don't divide my love sure. don't divide me and going like well i guess it'd be cool to see orange cassidy win but also like cody like right uh then just fight bad guys yeah yeah that's that's a great point and then if you're going to build up to darby allen and then that's the all right well cody's really big and it looks like he's picking on him and it'd be cool if darby got it right right and then we also had the uh, AEW Championship match with Lance Archer versus John Moxley with Eddie Kingston on commentary. So I actually did not listen to this uh, to this match. I only got to kind of watch it while I was setting up, um, and I was on the phone. And you that, missed some threats. So, so uh, what was was Eddie Kingston good? Because I feel like we talked about how for me, like when he's good, he's an exceptional. But every now and then he falls into the like annoying machismo version of a pro wrestler uh on you know talk oh, wrestling that, that i don't like yeah i guess sure whatever triple h um stone cold no Claire. you know what stone cold was stone cold didn't mince words though like he didn't like stone cold was abrupt he never said more and he had more fun where i feel like i don't know like the you know eddie kingston just like I don't know. I don't know. I I've, said, I, I've said it before on the show more eloquently than I can right now. What my problem is, people get it. I I I, I like it. I know, I know to a degree what you're talking about, but I think that's just m- males in general being the tough guy, and he is that tough guy. He's the street tough and threatened Shivani, threatened Jr. when they'd said something or they brought up something that was painful to him. Um, he's pointing out the ref in the match and going like, "Oh, look what it is. Look, oh look, he's putting him that move, the one that I didn't." tap out two or I say I quit. Oh, and the referee's letting it go. Oh, isn't that interesting? So he's got his he's got his beef. And I thought he helped add to this match, which was just kind of all over the place. We don't talk about it enough on the show. Lance Archer's continued hurting someone else on his way to the ring is fantastic. Yeah, you've mentioned that, that is, like that. Yeah. But that it just it's much like the lower third of Hangman Adam Page. Right. This is a great run on thing that he just fucks people up on his way to fucking somebody up. Right. He was dressed a little bit like a Shotzi Blackheart, I guess, for Halloween. But um, he had this little helmet and everything. But I don't think the match was great. I thought it was interesting what Eddie did afterwards and being nice to him and helping Moxley up and getting the title for him, doing all that, and then attacking him, letting him know I'm still the guy. So I wonder if this is kind of on the fly because it, all the eggs are put in the basket of Lance Archer, right? Yeah. Like before he tested positive for COVID and then they threw in Eddie Kingston as a, in the meantime, but it feels like all the attention and all the excitement went around Eddie Kingston. They're like, we got something better here. Right. Than what we do with Lance. Maybe they just lead to like a triple threat to protect Lance so that, you know, you know, Lance could not get beat, but lose his title shot. Could be. Yeah, I think that would be the I hope. I hope go. they don't. Yeah. Because I think that's weak, but... Sure. I mean, in fairness, though, it, it would feel it would feel new. I don't. We haven't yet to have any sort of multi-person match for the AEW Championship, so it would be a first ever. Um, It would be a first ever triple threat, which is always, you know, nice to be like, hey, we haven't, this has never happened before. Yeah, but I'm, you know me, I'm all for elimination and establishing somebody rather sure. than, uh, yeah, they cheated. Sure. Or they they snuck out a win. Right. Right on. Um uh well all in all, you know, happy one year anniversary, Dynamite. Uh, yeah, my favorite segment of this show has to be the MJF Jericho yeah, segment. Same. That was so fun. Same. Uh over on uh the other half of the Wednesday night wars. So I man, I haven't watched and I I don't know how long they've been there for or when they debuted it, but I love the Capitol Wrestling Center. I really enjoy the look of this. I like the wall 
of faces versus the fake rows like they are in the Thunderdome with people at home, even though they're recycled footage that they are just recorded and reused and it's not actually live people. Um, I like the the fencing around uh, in lieu of just the rest, uh, the hockey plexiglass. I love the way this place looks. I was super excited when it showed up. I was like, what the fuck is this? It looked so cool. I did not see it take- is not the CWC you're looking for. Uh, what? What? That is not the CWC I'm looking for. Cruiserweight Classic. Oh, okay. Um, I forgot what that I was old say. tournament. Uh, remember? Yeah, I know CWC. Yeah, but I didn't get which I didn't get the connection between the two, other than just the fact Dude, that they the, the same initials. The the joke of like ah, this is not. Every, well, I think there was initial excitement when there was this when people were talking about the CWC online. Like, wait, oh. what? Really? It's coming back? Like. No, 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 no. That's what we're calling this thing. Oh, see, I missed all that. I didn't know that that's how they were referring to it. That's fun. Um, but anyways, uh, I, I did, not, did not see TakeOver a couple weeks ago. It was the first TakeOver I've ever missed. Um, I do want to go back and watch it because I heard there were some great moments, some great matches. But it was fun diving back into NXT. Uh, I, this is the first I heard that Finn got injured. Uh, they did announce... As did Kyle O'Reilly. As did Kyle O'Reilly. Uh, so they, they injured each other in that match. Oops. They certainly did. Um, yes. So uh, they said that in like some sort of backstage segment that they are going to just monitor Finn. Thankfully, they're not just going to rip the title off of him in the first week. They've decided to see how his recovery goes and assess it on a like day-to-day basis. So maybe that's good news. Maybe for once they're not just going to just flip flop the title again because at this point the NXT title, which at one point I felt really like meant something and had some prestige, is now just a hot potato. Um, I'm ho- I'm uh, hoping that's also a good built-in storyline for Karrion Cross. Yeah. Even though I don't like the way that he just gave it up, um, that it felt a bit out of character. It'd be nice if they can just sort of retcon that and go, oh. They monitor you, but they strong arm me to take it off. Yeah. To, to just drop it. That's actually uh, right there for the picking. Absolutely. Um, but I did not watch this episode. Well, I was watching some New Japan instead. All right. Well, there was some. Uh, I'll go through it real quick here. Just uh, my highlights. Undisputed Era. The a, a new tag combination that we have yet to see. Strong and Fish beat Lorcan and Birch in a great tag match for the number one contendership. So we're going to get uh, strong and fish uh, versus Breezango next week for the uh, tag titles. Uh, we also got uh, Candice LeRae versus Shotzi Blackheart in honestly, what I'm going to say is probably the best one-on-one Candice LeRae match in NXT so far. Like she's been good in some of the like the big you know uh, multi women matches and and obviously in like war games and stuff like that, but this was probably and actually maybe the best Sh- Shotzi Blackheart as well one on one. This was a a really good match. Like I was surprised at how much I was into it considering I like both of these girls because I like who they are. But I like and I want to see them do well. But none of their matches have hooked me so far as like a you know right. like leaning into the TV kind of thing. And this match was really good. Uh, the only thing is uh, Indy Hartwell appeared and snuck some knuckles to Candice, helping her get the victory, earning the normal contender shot. And I don't know Indy Hartwell, and I don't know how much of a big deal this is or should be, but they did not do a good job. They, the camera never even cut to her by herself. I, did, I heard the name, didn't even know what she looked like. It was very much a, the camera didn't concentrate on her and let us know, hey, there she is. That's what she looks like. This is what she did. It was very much like, wait a minute. Did you just see who that was that slipped that thing? I think that was Indy Hartwell. And then it was just in the ring. They're they're probably going to keep doing what they did because they showed a couple of weeks ago that they were, uh, Gargano and Larray were in their boring home with no fun Disney decorations uh, <laughs> that they were watching footage Oh, and you love this too. They couldn't keep it consistent which arm she was holding the dog in. So no. when they cut from shots from behind, she's holding the dog one way, and then they cut forward, and she's holding the dog the other way. No. Um, it's the worst. They're watching footage of the the women's battle royale, and Indy Hartwell 
saves Candace, and Johnny's oh, going like, "Look, look, see, she's that she's one. A, I've always, I've always liked her. I've always liked her." And um, so this is probably for them to review the footage and go, "Oh, you see, look, she came out there. She is good. We should trust her." All right. Well, uh, in any case, really good match. I, I enjoyed it. Um, and we're gonna get Candace versus EO at the Halloween Havoc. Uh, and then the 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 big thing was the ending of this. Um, it was a uh, 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 p- priests versus Loomis for the North American title, which man, I just still don't like priests. I'm just still not invested in him in any way, shape, or form. But in any case, Cameron Grimes comes out, gets involved, and costs Dexter Loomis the title. And uh, on his way out, uh, Gargano attacks. Uh, priests with a chair and he's standing over his body, you know, and Regal comes out and says, all right, you're really, you're happy. You're proud of this. Blah, blah, blah. He's like, well, guess what? You guys are both getting your title matches at Halloween Havoc. Um, but there's going to, but the, you know, the ante is going to be upped or whatever. He's, he, he said the stakes are going to be hired. He said something that didn't make sense in the English language, but he was like, but don't take my word for it. Take her word for it. The host of Halloween Havoc. And then in a cloud of smoke on the other side of the arena, which I, by the way, I love that little stage in the, uh, the quote CWC, uh, Shotzi Blackheart is there standing in front of Ember Moon's Titan Tron for some reason. And she's, she explains that their matches are going to be, uh, spin the wheel, make a deal. And she like over enunciates every other word. And she gives a terrible performance and she does, creepy girl hands. I've talked about how I hate that. Like where people hold their hands out, like they're holding a magic ball. Um, and it was terrible. Mm-hmm. It was terrible. It was really bad. I don't know why they're making Shotzi Blackheart the host of this event. I don't know that she is the best personality type, like actress type of person to do this, but it's happening. We're getting our uh, spin the wheel. She's the deal. most Halloweeny one. Except for Ember Moon, <laughs> who is... Uh, a werewolf despite the fact that Shotzi Blackheart now howls like a werewolf right well they already had the um the the photos and stuff done with the other one and they clearly hadn't figured out oh we have Ember Moon now oh, oh well, we chose her shit we can't have two werewolves uh but so there you I go. love that uh NXT is just turning into WCW yeah they're just <laughs> like just the hey, best do you know all those old WCW things you used to like well they're here now Spin the wheel, make a deal. WCW, Halloween Havoc, WCW, whatever. We're just WCW war, now because we're games? trying to get, we're trying to get Southern fans that Great don't American watch bash. anymore. Yeah, it's literally everything. And we'll, we'll we'll get you. I'm trying to remember the little person's name who was doing the spin the wheel, make a deal. I'm looking it up right now because there's a whole thing with the coal miners glove match. Spin the wheel, make a deal. Uh, well, while you're doing that, I guess I'll, yeah, I'll say my m- moment of the night for me is, uh, yeah, probably the tag match. I love tag wrestling and I think that undisputed era, all four of them are exceptional and any two of them are great in the ring. And obviously I have touted my love for Oni Lorcan and Danny Birch for years at this point. Uh, I'm bummed that they actually didn't get this number contendership because I thought maybe it's time. Maybe they're finally going to strap the rockets in these guys. They're just so incredibly good. Um, and I don't know why they haven't been tag champs. I hope that that's not something that they never will achieve, but a uh, great tag match, uh, really, really great tag match, hard hitting, great, uh, story, well told and nice seeing With everybody fish. getting injured. It's, it's bound to happen, right? Cause then, uh, what's his nuts got injured last week when they're doing the thing with Lorkin and, uh, Birch. So I think that killed that whole thing. Rich Holland. Oh yeah. Rich. Holland. Yeah. Yeah. I saw that he was also injured. Uh, yeah, he got injured he last hurt, week on air. Who did he? Oh, he the one who hurt Adam Cole. But that's but that's yes. that that's storyline from what everything on right. the internet says. But then Rich Holland uh done fucked up his own leg Great. doing a thing with Birch and Lorkin. Just freak accident though, not a not a Kyle O'Reilly Finn Balor. Well, let right. me hit you really hard. Right. So yeah, everybody's gonna everybody's moving up the ranks here real fast. Well, in any case, uh, as of right now, NXT Halloween, 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 it's Hollywood and Halloween, uh, Halloween Havoc uh, is going to take place uh, Wednesday, October 28th. So it's going to be the regular time slot. It's going to be the regular NXT show. It's just going to be branded Halloween. Ha- God, why can't I say the word Halloween? Uh, Halloween Havoc 
Uh, the current matches so far are Gargano versus Priest in, for the North American title in a spin the wheel, make a deal match. Candice LeRae versus EO in a spin the wheel, make a deal match for the NXT women's title. And Rhea Ripley versus Raquel Gonzalez. I'm sure more matches will be added. Probably not a ton more because it's still only going to be the regular two hour block. But there you have that. Right. And yeah, uh, it should be uh, everybody wants the inflatable pumpkin. That's just. Yeah. I've noticed that that's, there's a lot of hype for the inflatable pumpkin. Yeah. If they, if that's not there, I think I think this will be a universally panned NXT event. Like you got the in your house house, yeah. but you couldn't get the fucking pumpkin. Well, here's the thing though. They may WCW might not have done as good at keeping their props through the years as W as WWE did. So when WWE acquired them, there might not have been a warehouse full of full of shit. They might just not have it. So they Check might have- Disco Inferno's house. It's in there. <gasps> oh, does he have everything? Probably. Oh. And it's Cheatham, the evil midget. Cheatham. Oh, boy. Yeah, that's not going to fly. 2020. Um, well, uh, on main roster WWE, we had our draft episodes. We did. I, yes, uh, the d- I was excited about the draft. Ditto. I feel like the draft I, I, is I fun. was too. Now, uh, help me on this one. I don't recall last year them drafting, because previously the draft used to just be you're drafting new picks, and then later on they would do trades, but yes. now it was flat out. You're still here. We're just, we're, we're dra- everybody's getting drafted. Yes. And there are no trades, and initially it was like, wait, what? Drew McIntyre to Raw? The, yeah. He's yeah. already on row. Oh, I see what you're doing. Yep. So, and then they do the thing too, where it was weird. Like, oh, well, these 30 people were selected. So then as you're watching, you're going, why didn't SmackDown, why didn't take it, the SmackDown women's champion? Is that kind of a big deal? Yes. But you're going, you're, you're lowering people's stocks in your mind because you're going, why didn't you pick this person? Oh, they're not eligible because we're not seeing constant up-to-date gra- graphics and is that so it's just weird you just have to take their word for it yeah i actually i thought that was the i didn't like the way the draft was handled i didn't like that it was just stephanie that there were no interbrand matches to decide like i always liked it when it was like whoever wins this match gets the next draft pick uh, like gets first in the next round i like it when there's some stakes i like it when it is very much smackdown versus raw happening in the draft and this didn't feel like that this felt like this is just who's being moved this year <laughs> like corporate it was weird. I think I wanted a little bit of because she's getting, you know, calls and hearing what they want, yep. but then it's already presented on a really nice card by some intern or something, yep. which was strange. Um, I just wanted, and I don't have to hear it. I can just see her being on the phone, holding her red phone and a blue phone if she wants. Yeah. And going like, oh, okay. And changing notes and going yep. from the actions or things that happened, but someone got picked, it changes their picks. But when she does multiple picks in a row, that doesn't change anything. There was no raw pick this, a smacked into this. So it just felt, it felt like a, nothing was going to change at any moment. Exactly. And it also didn't feel like it was TV worthy. It felt like you could have just tweeted out who was the, who was where with the exception yeah, on the of c- crawl on the yeah, bottom with the exception of the new day spot. There was no moment where the draft affected what happened on the show. Even heavy machinery, Otis going like, well, I got drafted the one show and I guess we'll find out with you later. Yeah. They didn't give a shit. No. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. I was bummed that the way that draft, the draft was handled. With that said, I thought there was some good things on the shows this week that I feel like that Falls Count Square match with Big E and Sheamus was awesome. It was crazy. I loved it. It was I, very I, crazy. I, I was like. You know, I put on SmackDown and I was sort of like, well, let me just put this on and half pay attention to it so that I have some stuff to talk about this week. And I was immediately like, what is happening? I was glued to the TV. They beat the shit out of each other. They looked awful um, in, a, in a good way. In like a, you know, they really are giving it their all. So there's some fun segments. That was probably moment of the night on SmackDown for me, hands down. I don't know. Having a bunch of flower and egg wounds uh in your back like oh, i don't gosh. know about that but that seems pretty fucked up it's a, it's nice that this is a time where they do have medical staff in the back and it's not yeah. just well 
take a shower and drive to the next town. Like, oh, no time. Right. I just got to get in the car bleeding with flour and egg I in hope, my wounds and go. I hope that my rental insurance uh, covers blood stains on this <laughs> this fucking uh, Ford Focus. But yeah, no so Big, Biggie beat Seamus in a really badass false kind of anywhere match. Uh, that re- that they gave me attitude. I refuse just the way that it was in the park. Like it, it, it was fun. It was old school. Um, and then right after mm-hmm. that, Xavier and Kofi both return, and it was this really fun moment. And I love the way that this was played with the three of them, and the fact that Biggie was excited but not in a ton of pain. He acted this really well. Like he wasn't doing his dance. He was like, I just got the shit beat out of me. Um, yep. And then they immediately just win the titles five minutes later. Yep, they do that, Thanks and then after that. Thanks for coming, Cesaro and Shinsuke. And then after that, during the pandemic, during a time when things are not fun, when you brought back the fun thing that is wonderful in wrestling uh, and Black Lives Matter movement, and we want to see prominent black stars, and uh, that well, let's just end that. Let's just let's let's read the room and go. Well, I don't hear anybody making any noise. It's because there's no audio there. Uh, let's just end this. I, let's I'm, just end this. I'm torn here. Um, so you have what is the best team you've had since the Shield. And in my opinion, has been better than the Shield because there's a longevity and like an actual brotherhood here that has a, a better original story. The fact that we know the behind the scenes kayfabe of why they were put together the fact that they're friends, the fact that they asked for this, the fact that they wanted to do that. They made, this is done themselves. They, they got this spot on their own accord. Right. And I look at the shield. They did not eat pancakes. They They just don't. There was no ice cream. Maybe Moxley. Yeah. So maybe, but those other two, they don't have carbs. So you've got like the best team here. And when you have something that's like this, you have an opportunity to make must see television the day that they stop being a team. Like, by one of them turn and heal or one of them just deciding I quit, even if it is, they're still a baby face and they're friends. If, if Big E just says like, guys, I want to do this on my own. That's dramatic television. Like, yeah, if, it, if Big E wants to do it on his own, Kofi also says, I want to do it on my own. I want to be the champ. Right. And Xavier going, well, let's come back together. Right. At least there's story in that rather than yep. oh, circumstantially, it's all over now. The fact that it was circumstantial, so stupid. The fact that, this all takes place in the same building. Raw and SmackDown don't travel. Yes. So it doesn't like just be on the same show. Also, by the way, I thought New Day defended the tag titles under Freebird rules, which they didn't make any mention of. So I guess that means that he's like, he isn't he also the SmackDown tag team? Like, yes. Yes, he is. This whole thing was just handled so poorly. And I'm not angry that they're split. That's not what my problem is, is that they're split in a stupid way, but I'll play devil's advocate to what you said about like, well, you know, here you've got these, these, these superstars, this prominent black group, this, uh, you know, stable of superstars. The truth is, is now you get, you get more across both brands because now I do think that they have big plans for Big E. I, in my, if I had to take a guess, Big E's going against Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. That's my guess. Um, if I had to make a long-term guess way out, that's the plan. I think they they really are going to push Biggie. I think it's his time. And because of that, that's great because he'll be on one show. And then I'm sure New Day is going to just run the tag division continually on the other show, which is great. So now you do have, one would argue you do have more prominent black superstars in primary roles because it's this group is split across two shows. So with that said, good news. But circumstantially, uh, it's crap. I- I do. I I have thought about that. I also am predicting it right now, and to shit on their parade if they felt like, oh, you know, it'd be really cool is that Survivor Series, they're on Raw, uh, right. uh, Kofi and Xavier and Biggie's on SmackDown, and they have to fight each other, and they won't, and then they're down to the last three, and then Biggie eventually has to fight them and beats them, and that'll be how we rocket them up, like. Or we can just keep enjoying them being friends yes. and we can have those guys in Biggie's corner, much like they were for Kofi. And we can celebrate with more people that are friends together and enjoy that. a thing that have actual chemistry rather than the other problem is they don't have a replacement. They don't have something else that's as hot as this or as fun as this to go. All right. We know you're upset. 
we should have done this any other year other than 2020 because it is an inevitability in wrestling. And I get that. Just not this fucking year. Yeah. Uh, that you go, look, we're, we're doing a switch because this other thing's good. So we're going to pivot right now. We're going to we're going to put the spotlights, as you said, on the two brands with these with these three guys. And then you're going to have this act in the meantime. And then later we're going to do it together. Yeah. Like then we're going to bring them back and then they're all going to fight. They don't have that. Yeah, they don't have that. And it's yeah, like you're right. It's going to feel instead. Of, it's going to feel not like there's more new day. It's going to feel like there's no new day. That's what it's going to feel like. It would be one we're thing here. Big E every time at the beginning of the raw intro. No, we're not for the tag team champions. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Oh, because he's in the pre-record as well. I forgot. I forgot he does. Because it's just yeah. a, it's a new day. Yes, it yes, is. That, it's like, yes, yeah. I oh, that was Biggie. That. He's not there. I forgot about that. Or they're going to change their music like Dum Dums. Um, like Biggie will probably get his own music or something. But uh, it, it, it's just unfortunate. Again, I'm not upset that they split. I'm upset how they split. It's just it was yeah. uneventful. It was stupid. It was uh, there was nobody for them to be angry at. Cause it's not even like they were like got in the face of Stephanie McMahon. It's like, what the hell are you talking about? Like, cause it's like, we don't blame her. She didn't do it. Like if anything, make this the doing of somebody that they're feuding with. If after that match happened, Seamus took a part, you know, Seamus got beat up. Seamus took aside uh, Alex Pierce or whoever. No, Alex Pierce. That's not his name. Uh. <laughs> Adam Pierce. Adam Pierce is the name I meant to say. Hey, Alex. Not um, our Pauskies. Um, so if they took Adam, I don't if, think our Pauskies fucked this up. If Seamus like blackmailed Adam Pierce into ensuring that Big E was traded away or something like that, or that or that the new day was traded away, that and, and and it was somebody's fault. Like it was this. Di- this didn't happen just circumstantially. The new day. This happened because some heel made it happen. Then at least there's well, a what's story. crazy is we got that. You know, we got that right. In what way? I, I, maybe I missed it. We got that with Miz and Otis. Oh, right. Yes, we, we didn't did. get that with this. You're That's right. where they put that focus. They're You're like, right. hey, we should make that happen. Like, yeah, not with Otis. He doesn't know what's going on. He puts his lunch yeah. in the Money in the Bank briefcase, his contract in his lunch pail. Like, that's also, not. Also, we're invested in Otis. We don't care about uh, heavy machinery anymore. You've made us care about the one guy. So if they split up, we go, oh, whatever. Too bad for Tucker. Yeah. Mother Trucker's never on TV, so it doesn't right. matter. Oh, so yeah, it's, it, it's just a bummer. That was a thing. We're watching this where the, yes, there's still a lot of performers and a lot of wrestlers that I like, and there's going to be some new matches and stuff. But ultimately when I see that, I go, that's something I really like and enjoy. I think it's really important right now. And I don't see, from the moment that they're back and all the moments that you described of them being back and being together, those other moments are going to make the moments where they're split apart are going to be stronger than if they were all together. Yeah. 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 It's a, it's a bummer. And uh, again, my only hope in the silver lining is that Biggie gets a great big push out of this, but you know who, you know how else he can get a great big push with his friends next to him. <laughs> like the, it's, it's not complicated. Uh, you did. There it once. are people that cool. actually get to hang out together without masks. It's incredible. I don't know how they I envy it. them, but now they took that away. Um, what else did we get on? on we got Bray Wyatt versus uh, Kevin Owens, which was what you expect. There was a moment in that match that I thought was really cool. Uh, the ending of that match, and I like to think, I like to think yeah. that if they are at home watching, I like to think that like Stone Cold. And Mick Foley were at home watching and they saw that spot where he hits the stunner while he's in the mandible claw, but he doesn't let go. I'd like to think that they saw that and went, ah, shit, we should have done that <laughs> because I could have uh, totally, really did it at the house show because I, yeah, because I could totally see that have been mankind squealing who's a glutton for punishment and getting hit with a stunner, but not going down mm-hmm. and it would have been uh, the biggest pop of all time in uh, the attitude era with a full arena and the two of them and him keeping the clock. Cause it was a really cool spot. That was a great was. way to great way to end that match. Um, but uh, yeah. And I think, you know, for the most part, that was it. We talked about the SmackDown tag titles being switched. It was and, a fun uh, watch. Um, and uh, yeah, and Mo- Lars Sullivan. Oh yeah. Lars Sullivan returned. So I'm, 
this is one of those one of those instances where like we've talked about this on the show before with people getting accused of things and people's past behaviors. We talked about this with Hogan and like ex- reaccepting Hogan and like allowing people to change and forgive and give people second chances and all this sort of stuff. And I- I'm like, I'm more concerned the way that I always look at stuff like this with uh, like, uh, uh, I've, I forgot his name. Lars Sullivan is like, yeah, I'm going to judge what I know about what he said and he did in the past and all that stuff about the whole online weightlifting thing where he had all of these awful racial anti-Semitic homophobic, these terrible, terrible things he said and how, when it got out, apparently there was like trouble in the locker room and, and I can judge that from my seat here, but Mm -hmm. I am way more interested to see how those around him who know him, who consider him peers who are affected by those sorts of statements feel about him. And that's how I sort of gauge the okay. Right. So I actually, a part of me, right. Selfishly, a part of me wants people like new day or, you know, other, um, you know, uh, black superstars in the company or other gay superstars in the company to be like, listen, we've talked with him. He feels bad. He, he knows how, you know, that doesn't, he doesn't think that way anymore. That was him a long time ago. Like I kind of want their approval of, being able, like you can you can you can watch this guy on TV and not feel bad. Well, they also have to do that with Velveteen Dream. Yes, and, exactly. Uh, yeah, and that's, that's what I'm getting at. Like I want, I sort of like I kind of need them to tell me that it's okay because I'm just sort of watching him. Like oh, like I don't. I used to like that dude. I, I thought it was great in NXT. I thought he was like one of my favorite mm-hmm. new big men that came about. I touted how much I dug him in NXT because I thought he moved well. I thought he was a fun, scary looking big man who was legitimately creepy and. But now I'm just sort of like, yeah, you're uh, you're racist. <laughs> That's all I see. I have a suggestion. If you just took Lars Sullivan, right, and just think of him as a maybe just a little pile of clay. So the first thing you got to do is to just reassess and look at him again is wash him off. You know, just just like think of it like taking a shower. You just wash him off, get him clean and starting over. And then from there, just. Just take your hand and just start molding it. Start molding, molding it and shape Listen. it around. Move it. Listen, I know what you're doing here, and I'm not going to shame somebody for any sort of sex work or pornographic stuff they've done. That is not, I have not upset at him for any of that. More power Wait, to you, man. About? More power to you. It's 2020. I'm not going to shame nobody for doing porn. Get it, all right? I'm not going to shame anybody uh, for doing porn of any sort of uh, sexual orientation. Uh, you get it, all right? That's what I say to him about that. Just don't be a racist asshole. That's that's my real problem, all right? I got no problems with the porn. Um, Speaking of no problems with the porn, Raw continued our draft. That was not an appropriate segue. Um, we also got... What did we get that was worth mentioning? We got uh not a lot. We got Robert Roode and Dolph Ziggler. Oh yeah, that's what we discovered. We decided that the tag championships were just going to trade because Ugh. Street Profits got traded to SmackDown and New Day got traded to Raw. So they were like, eh, listen, just hand each other each other's titles because none of this stuff makes it make means anything anyway." That while I know on camera and in the world of it that all made sense, that also was just the. Um, as a as a as a lifelong fan to watch and go, this this just felt so flippant and unnecessary to do it this way when so many other fun things could happen. Yeah, or you could have foreseen this and not had to do this, but just to go trade these and for the the to try and keep track of all the bullshit. Everyone's got a title these days, and both shows have all these titles, and to keep track of it and, and go. So in my mind, I have to forever remember that they were the opposite champions and then the draft happened and they go, just switch. And then that's how that history worked. And that's how we move forward. Like that's so meaningless and really makes this not fun. You have a hell in a cell coming up where it does seem like nearly every match is going to be inside that cell hang all four titles from the goddamn ceiling, put eight tag teams in there 
make absolute chaos happen. And when it yeah. comes out, when it comes out, hey, guess what? New Day is now the Raw Tag Champions and the Street Profits have won the SmackDown Champions and the champions switched and we got a great match out of it. Yeah, shit. I'd even say, um, just for just spitballing here, I, I love that idea. Fucking put them outside and on top of the cell. Oh, so you got to go get them first. That is so fun. So you got to get out of the cell. Yeah. And then you got to go get them. And then only one team can win one. So once you get them, you're good. You can't then just yeah, grab yeah, both. Of course. Yeah. When you, when you get one, you're, you leave or, yeah. or, or, or you do stay in it. And then that just person, those people didn't win. They, who cares? Why not? Yes. Right? Like, yeah. Like show us something new. You have opportunities. Show us new shit. So that bummed me out. And but you, whatever. Yes. Agreed. Agreed. It, same thing. Right. It just, why am I watching if we can just trade titles? Yeah. Like, this is yep. just fucking So according ridiculous. to that, does that mean that the Universal and, Champ- and the W title can also just trade at any given point or the Intercontinental and the US title or the women's titles? Guess, Do the women's titles, can they just trade titles? Well, if, they don't, like, so if they, they want to match their wardrobe instead? When this draft started, it was so funny because it's like, oh, all right. So they got the red straps and the blue straps. So they don't want to they don't want to change colors. But later they're like, you know what? Let's do that. Let's actually do it. And then someone went, oh, well, what are we going to do? Oh, I don't know. Just trade them. So it just went yeah. from you. You clearly don't want to change this or you don't want to make new toys and you didn't come up with a new title. So why? Why? Just why? rename them. Just rename them. Get rid of Raw and SmackDown for the women's and for the tag titles and name them titles. Name them the WWE titles and the Universal or the Universal Tag Champions, or the Heritage Tag Champions, or the World Champ, whatever. Just give us a name. Or, or crazy idea, since we aren't going anywhere, and there's just, as you said, one building, there's one set of Tag Champs, there's one right. World Champ. Yeah, there's that too, obviously. One Women's World Champ, all that, like, yeah. just just that. Right. Just that. Well, um, yeah, other than we that, fixed it, wrestling. It felt like, a, yeah, it felt like a, a less eventful Raw than it was a SmackDown um, we did get the, yeah. ba- the number one contenders battle Royal, uh, for the women's number one contendership in which Lana won after being dumped by Natalia earlier in the evening after a tag match. I don't know that Lana was the right person, especially when you have a returning Carmella. This seemed to me a no brainer. Like you have Carmella enter it like kind of late and then win it. Cause she's the big surprise return. No, like, I don't but, know. This seems but weird. she's the SmackDown superstar and it's for the raw women's title, oh, but it was okay, between yeah. both brands and it's, it's ultimately it's like, all right, well, right. I get it. You don't have 15 women on raw, but I'm just a little, I, I it's too much now, like too much yeah. in WWE land of, we forgot this person went under the bottom rope and it's yeah. just been laying out this whole time. Like, okay. It's it's happened a lot. We need yeah. to find out other tactics of yeah. they've been cowering in the corner and we see them the whole time. Something, but yeah, yeah, it's um, a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, so is there anything in the draft that you want to chat about? Anybody get drafted that you're excited about and are bummed about first off? So bummed that Seth Rollins and the Mysterios both got swapped to another show. That's so stupid. This, yeah. Oh, <laughs> stop please um i was uh, i guess i in my mind i keep thinking that smackdown is the more athletic fox show where it's like they want right. the 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 great athletes on there so aj styles got traded away charlotte flair is not on that show to me it just it seems crazy because when i saw bianca belair go yeah to smackdown i'm like all right here we go we're gonna we're gonna load it up with the athletes and and uh do that not to say that all these people aren't athletic but the super crazy athletes you know because we got street profits over there too so we're gonna see montez ford do crazy shit so right i don't know well i think that was surprising i will say looking at the smackdown women's roster sasha banks bianca belair bailey the riot squad and natalia so there's only six women which i know they don't have a ton of women carmella again with carmella as well wait i didn't see her on that list Okay. Yeah, she's on this list. She's in between Apollo and Alistair Black. Got it. Got it. Um, okay, so you got seven women. Oh, yeah, I see her. Um, and I'll check the website. We talked about this earlier. Like, it's every list we could find is not totally up to date, or there's right. still potentially free agents. So it's weird. So, I'm yeah, check. As we did mention earlier, the only two people that were listed to be drafted in the drafting pool, as WB put it, that weren't drafted were Andrade and Mickey James. 
Um, other names that are on the website as, you know, roster members, but were also not drafted, uh, were Becky Lynch, Jimmy Uso, Ivar, Sonya Deville, Edge, Jinder Mahal, Samoa Joe, Mojo Rowley, The Forgotten Sons, Bo Dallas, Big Show, John Cena, Goldberg, Ronda Rousey, which I didn't realize was still there, and The Undertaker. If you did that slower, I could have answered some of those. Okay. Um, so Zelina's on SmackDown, according to the website. Uh, I don't see her on either list. Uh, Mickey James is on SmackDown, according to the okay, website. So maybe they were like post. You know, sometimes they do like, here's the ans- the, the extra draft, the uh, ancillary mm-hmm. draft, whatever they call it. And Billy Kay is also on SmackDown. Okay. According to the website. All righty. And uh, the Viking Raiders are on Raw that I saw earlier. They're staying on and Raw. And some of the other ones I don't Oh, and Mojo's on SmackDown. Don't worry. Mojo is on SmackDown. Ooh, thank God. Um, so, yeah, I mean, was there any other big... Sh- I mean, obviously, like, I think the big story of the draft is, is New Day. Um, but other than that, there's not a lot of surprising stuff. It's just sort of people... It's some stuff that I'm happy to set up new rivalries and some stuff that I'm sort of like, well, I'm bummed. Like, I was excited that that uh, Seth Rollins got drafted until I saw that the Mysterios got drafted because I was excited yeah. to see, you know, him versus all the other people that are stick, sticking around on SmackDown. And then I realized, like, oh, there he's not going to. He's just going to fight Mysterios forever. I'm excited for Sheamus and Drew McIntyre to fight. Yeah. Because I think they'll they'll really bring the best out of each other. They have a, a long history, and they're just two beat em up guys, especially with this version of Drew. Also, um, the, the Fiend is back on Raw. So yeah. you now have the Fiend, Drew McIntyre. Uh, let's see who are the big who are the big big players. We got the Fiend, Drew McIntyre, Randy Orton, Tucker, uh, Tucker is the you know. Oh, by the way, Keith Lee. Man, really bummed with his placement in this. Did not treat him special. Did not seem to care about him. That seemed to me like if they were smart and pushing his thing, that would have been like a first round pick just so that they can make him seem like, hey, we know yep. you're making waves here. Yeah, that, there was a lot of people like that, but he was the one that I felt most. They don't they don't care about him as much as maybe we thought they did a couple weeks ago. Yeah, that that's definitely one. I feel like all the twenty four seven title players stayed on Raw, so that yep, also yep. left anything to be desired. The where fact it's that like, the, oh, all right, the fact that Retribution was a part of the draft, <laughs> like, what are we doing? And, Just and no, no one split them up. And also, Mercedes Martinez is not in the grouping currently. No. It was four dudes and uh, Mia yeah. Yim. Yeah, it was the so Mercedes the three, Martinez. It was what's uh, going on with her? I, well, Ali replaced her. They were like, "We'll just give oh. Ali her name." <laughs> oh, okay. It's it's um, just silly. So yeah. there, there's there's a couple of things that are I'm sure will be interesting, or when they when they start something, I'll go, "Oh yeah, that seems like it'll be it, all right." It it seems like it's a short term. Hey, we thought of what we want to do for Survivor Series. Yeah, maybe. It does feel like it does feel like when it comes to the big players, and I mean that very literally, uh, that raw is the place where they're all going to live. And it does seem like mm-hmm. the the sort of, you know, technical high fly kind of people, with the exception of AJ, who got sent over to raw, really are going to live on SmackDown with like the Seth Rollins, Jay Uso, the Mysterios. Um, Murphy, Kalisto, Daniel Bryan, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, Ziggler and Rude. Like it does feel like SmackDown, Shorty G. SmackDown is going to be the like technical wrestling kind of place, which I feel like that's how it used to be years ago. I remember that was the way it worked was like, oh, you tune into SmackDown for wrestling and Raw for pro wrestling. I remember that was like the thing I used to say, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like... uh Kind of the person that seemingly has the short on the stick here, unless you did some heel face changes, is Sami Zayn as far as opponents. Yeah, you're right. Because while yes, it'd be cool to see Biggie do that, I want to see. I, I mean, we've seen Biggie long enough. It's like, no, nah, just go for the main thing. You know, maybe you get Jey Uso in there, but 
Yes. Paula Cruz doing that. I don't know. Like he had some momentum going, but then there's just no character with the guy to really latch on to. You know, um, it's that it's, guy keeps getting stop started like crazy. I feel like if they didn't screw up Alistair Black so terribly, Alistair would be a great old like original. When I say original, I mean like recently drafted Alistair Black, still a baby face looking for a fight. Him and Sammy yeah. for IC title. Holy shit. That could be. That could be literally the storyline of the fucking year if they would have been doing that because that could be great. I, I would not be surprised if not before long we see the reunion of Sammy and Owens and just let them go be fun right. again. Let them, especially... I, the, yeah, yeah. They, I forgot about that. Yeah, they're that's back a, That's a now. good contender for the IC title. So ultimately, like... I, I didn't expect it to be a crazy shakeup. I I think, I and I know they're always trying to do stuff week to week to get people to watch. So I yeah. feel like Keith Lee could have been a surprise draft pick, but I know the excitement was there in the weeks before. Like he's coming to Raw, so you want to watch that. Right. And the breaking up of the Iconics could have been done via this. Um, but th- this was a third week of no raw underground yeah so they they drafted dabocado but it's like he doesn't yep. wrestle for you really yeah he wrestles on the underground show they must so have signed him on the contract the same day that they signed retribution it just feels it still has the feeling right now where there's a lot of stuff there's a couple of things that have the 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 potential they're foreseeing what they want to do and the potential oh, of it yeah. like a roman reigns do so like yeah Heyman, all those players involved where they go we know where we're going. We know what we're doing. But yeah. so much of the show, you go, I don't feel like you guys know what's going on. So this makes me more detached from your show because yeah. as I watch, it's very fly by the seat of pants. Yep. And it does definitely feel that way. I The only saving grace is that we're entering WrestleMania season not too far from now. And so I think after Hell in the Cell, all of the seeds are going to start having having to be planted for whatever they're going to do come March, April next year. Um, but we'll, I guess we're going to have to just sit and wait until then we do have hell in the cell. Um, we have three matches currently confirmed for hell in the cell, October 25th, and all three of them are taking place inside hell in a cell. So that's three hell in a cell matches. One of hell, it, all in a cell, <laughs> all hell in one cell. Uh, the one that is unique so far is an, I quit match inside the hell in a cell between Roman and Jay. For the Universal Championship. We also have McIntyre and Orton in the cell for the WWE title. And we've got Bailey and Banks in the Hell in a Cell for the Women's Championship. SmackDown Women's Championship. All can be exceptional matches. Like, I'm not... I, I feel like if that was the card right there, I'd be like, yeah, i tune in for that. Um, I mean, I'm going to tune in for it regardless because I think those are all great matches. But what I'm getting at is like, I, I hope now that they concentrate on just putting on some good matches with the rest of the card instead of loading it up with ridiculous uh unnecessary hell in the cell matches just because they right. don't want to take the structure down <laughs> but i yeah. don't know um did you do i we know but we're kind of running uh right on schedule here Ooh, for head, heading into the hotline short. heading into the hotline but did you uh did you watch any new japan you mentioned yeah i, wa- I watched uh the october 10th event um which uh, that that was cool uh some Definite highlight of Minoru Suzuki versus Kota Ibusha. Uh, Ibushi. Uh, that one was super awesome. Um, I and I've I've gone back and forth when I watch some of these. I've watched them with Japanese commentary and I've watched them with English commentary. And while I get informed with the English commentary, it just doesn't. It's detached because they're not there. Right. And the excitement of the Japanese commentators there. I sometimes feel like I don't really need the story. I can look up the standings and everything and see the points because now we have eliminations. So I'm a little bit behind, but um, we have the B block. Zack Sabre Jr. Um, in order, the, you had to score 10 points in order to move on. Right, right. So Zack Sabre Jr. in the B block. I should say A block first. I just had this up first. A block. We got Jay White with 12 points. Kota Ibushi with 12 points. Kazuchi uh, Okada. I should say Okada. Right, yeah, Okada okay. with 12 <laughs> points. Uh, that's why everybody does that. Uh, Will Ospreay with 10 points. And then we got... On the B block, we got Evil with 12 points, Naito with 12 points, Sonata with 10, and Zack Zabra Jr. with 10. So a couple of people that I really dig are out, but, you know, I can go back and watch some of those other matches. But we have four and four moving forward, so it's it's getting narrowed down here. So there, there's definitely some cool shit. And that, that match was cool from that night. 
and uh, there's a really fun story with uh, Takahashi versus Switchblade Jay White where it was arranged where Takahashi was just going to lay down for him. Right. And Jay White's going to cover him, and then he's just kind of fucking around with him for a little bit. Right. Like, oh, all right, I'll get the cover. All right, I'll get the cover. And then eventually when he's going to do it, Takahashi then has second thoughts and like, no. And the Jay White's flipping out like, hey, we agreed. What the hell? And then Takahashi's trying to get the roll-ups on him. Right. And that led to something fun. Like, every time I've tuned in and I've not seen every match, there's always been these unique, fun things that everybody's doing in in this tournament. So it's it's been a real fun watch consistently. Nice. Um, do you have a pick so far to win? Well, my favorite pick is eliminated, so I guess my new pick would be... I'm going to go Naito. All right. Who was your favorite? Who was, uh, who was eliminated? That was your pick. Well, just because I love him so much, Toruyano. Oh, okay. So I talked about a match last week that was super funny from uh, October 8th. I highly recommend this one again. It's him and Zack Sabre Jr., which again, I'm saying his Zack Sabre Jr. match was good. Where they, Yano tied, er, he taped a chair to Zack Sabre Jr.'s hand through the railing. Right. So, so that he couldn't pull it through. Yeah. And we're just trying to get the count out win. Right. And then later, Zack Sabre Jr. takes uh, Yano as far out from the ring as possible. And this is like what he used to do in the video games. And then he <laughs> and then he, he fucked up his leg as much as he could and, and then, then ran. ran back to the ring. Yeah. And Yano's like hobbling trying and to trying get to get there as fast as he could. But just going for count outs. Like, yeah. I loved it. I actually love that because I love that you said that's how you play the game because I do that all the time. Count out victory is the easiest way to win. <laughs> yeah. I have to do that shit in Battlegrounds all the time because it's fucking, that game's bullshit. <laughs> well, there you have it. Um, you want to take some hotline calls? Absolutely. From Padres. What's up? This is Chris Daria 7 from Fort Worth, Texas. And I'm getting this in right under the wire probably, but I don't care. I'm just here to talk about wrestling. Specifically, people from the independents. I know it's probably been talked about a bunch, but, I mean, with so many nationally exposed companies out there right now, snapping up a whole bunch of great talent, um, and things like watch I watch Dark every week and see what they're doing on that show, how they've transformed that into, or from a... Uh, from kind of just the dark show after the show to kind of a highlight of some independent wrestlers that you don't really get to see too much or just names that you never knew about, hashtag Will Hobbs. Um, I'm wondering, do you guys have any wrestlers, any independent uh, wrestlers that you're just waiting to see on a national program, on a power, on a, when it comes back, or Impact, or Ring of Honor, or AEW, or even WWE, or NXT? What sort of... Uh, People are like, these this guy's too good to be where he is right now. He's got to be higher. For me, there's uh, one that I've always uh, really enjoyed his name. Uh, or he went by the name Hollow Wicked. Competed a lot for Chikara. I think he trained in Chikara, too, uh, among others in the Northeast. Basically, Wrestling Pumpkin, with who then turned into a wrestling Dark Lord slash Cthulhu-like cult leader. Oh, it's fun. Uh, but he was amazing. I loved his, his shtick every single time. I was like, why is, he, why is he not anywhere else? And I'm wondering if that happens now after Jakara closed. So I'm just curious if y'all have anybody like that who needs a little more exposure in your opinion. All right. Peace. Love you. Chris Darius 7, we love you too. Or just me. I love you. I don't know. Maybe you were talking right to me. I feel like he was talking directly to me. I like like him. See? There you have it. Um, thanks so much for the call. Uh, great to hear from you. I, I have been just a terrible mainstream wrestling fan for a couple of years now. Uh, I actually feel like once I started doing this show, I became a, a worse wrestling fan because I felt like it was more important to watch the product that everybody's watching that I just, I'm not, a, I'm not uh, up on the indies as much really anymore. And I also don't, don't go to live shows. Obviously they're not happening right now, but even in the past couple of years, past few years I <laughs> haven't been going to live shows. So I don't really have an answer. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a bad wrestling fan. I'm uneducated in the indies. Well, and I'm, 
I am as well for a lot of the same reasons as you. Uh, obviously, first answer, Marky Extreme should be hired and be wrestling everywhere. That's a no brainer. Duh. Uh, secondly, it's it's the people I know from this show that have been right. on. They're independent wrestlers and they've been guests. So the Lockhart brothers, um, I think they're a fun tag team and they should get some more exposure and some more opportunities. I also think Robert Baines, uh, who has been hobo in the past. Um, and he's even been on NXT once as, uh, in a, in a tag team match. Uh, and a lot of the other people from championship wrestling from Hollywood that I can think of, that I've seen and watched them been like, well, Ray Roses and Eric Watts are just on dark. So they've gotten a couple right. opportunities now. Yeah. And Peter Avalon is the librarian there, but shit, I don't see him on TV ever. So uh, there's a lot of people that have just recently gotten opportunities. I'm like, oh, well, but I, I'm right there with you. I'm, I'm not as up to date or the people I hear about have shown up on AEW like war horse or something like that. Right. So um, that's true. Yeah. I feel like I heard of war horse and then we showed up. I went, Oh, it's that guy. But I, that was yeah, still like, like the first time I've seen him wrestle. Yeah. But yeah, those are those are the 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 few that come to mind for me. Hey guys, it's Nuggets. Um, the draft seemed very arbitrary and nonsensical this year. Like they drafted entire storylines. Um, they split up the new day, which I kind of saw coming, but whatever. If it gets Biggie a title shot, I'm cool. Um, but like you drafted the intercontinental champion in the fourth round like fifth or sixth or something like that wouldn't you want to draft all the champions at first and the whole drafting of retribution was was really dumb like stephanie didn't even sell it she was just like oh okay the retribution like why would anybody draft them like it's kind of dumb um it just seemed arbitrary this year. So I just want to know what you guys thought of the draft. Okay. Hey. Nuggets, thank you so much for your call. Always great to hear from you. And uh, yeah, kind of uh, uh, we uh, we mirrored a lot of those sentiments earlier. But th- you do bring up a good point about retribution. I think the funny story would have been that there is X amount of people in the draft and everybody needs to be drafted. And so they were like the last one picked in gym class where like no no brand wanted them and so it became about who gets stuck yeah. with them they could have figured out a way to they're make, all about that anyway right yeah they could have it's figured all out a way about to make like competition. oh the system sucks and they fucked us over right so yeah you're right not that's, anymore they paid you and they picked you <laughs> yeah um but yeah that's pretty um, much uh you know like i said i think we covered most of that anything else to add scott absolutely nuggets uh as she does with her wonderful, charming personality. She has inspired a, a, a great idea in my head. What was the pay-per-view we just had, Jake? Um, the last one was uh, not payback. Was it payback? That's right. Clash of Champions. So with Clash, Clash of Champions. Of Champions. <laughs> I forgot. Um, with Clash of Champions, Gold every rush. title's on the line. Yeah. Right? Let's move the time of the draft or move the time of Clash of Champions so it is known that the stakes are high, that if you're a champion of that show, you cannot be drafted. Right. Smart. So you want to stay with whoever or like that's how you want to stay on that show for whatever reason that you know that your life won't get messed with and the champions stay on the shows and they can't get drafted if you win. Right. But if you don't win, you're in the draft. Yeah. I feel like that would that would at least remove the the weird bullshit of the like oh we switched the tag champs we switched that like no you can't get drafted if you're the champions of those shows. Uh, I actually think that's a brilliant idea if it always coincided like the weekend of the draft or I'm sorry the weekend of Clash of Champions was right before whatever the draft was. Yeah, yeah. that's a smart idea. Because then that makes Clash of Champions kind of exciting cuz you go oh well if they lose then they're in there and Yeah. You're you want to watch and see. Um, Thanks, Nuggets, to that idea. Yeah. Also, she brings up a good point about like the fact that all the champions were drafted first. The fact that Sami Zayn was like fourth. It was in the what round was he in? He was in the fourth round on the second day. Right, and that's think, that's what I mean. Yeah, 
that goes with that. So it removes the lessening of the want of a champion. Yeah. Because they're like, oh, well, we sooner want Braun Strowman or we want we want contenders. We want championship like, contenders. Right. Yeah. We want the best matches for these champions to fight. Yeah. 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 All good points. I think uh, we've proven time and time again that uh, the compadres and our Powskis should just write wrestling, I guess. Take that, Dana Warrior. Good morning, compadres. Owen from Leeds here. Um, my question today uh, is, what is your favorite wrestler's cameo on a television show or, or a movie um, or just their role in something? Mine being uh, the series Always Sunny in Philadelphia, which my opinion is just it's like the arc, the triumph of uh of comedy in case you're wondering scott that's french hey clever me <laughs> um yeah so mine is the maniac which was rowdy roddy piper in always sunny um is just hilarious in it so yeah um i just wondered your guys thoughts okay thank you bye-bye oh and from leeds teaching us a little french and everything um Ooh, but- la. I would have thought it would have been The Rock in uh, the Emoji movie would have been his favorite cameo. <laughs> well done, Scott. Well done. Um, yeah, I mean, he stole my answer. Like that that very specific that great. episode with the pyramid scheme is, is one of my favorite things. And Roddy Piper is just so damn good in it. Um, yeah, I think he's in two or three episodes. Yeah, he's in a few. He's, he, he's like yeah. a character in the series. But I think that one specific episode is one is one of my favorite ones because it's just you no, know, they flip the script on what you think of them. Um, Me- but mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, uh, that's a tough one. I feel like uh, I remember being surprised at George the Animal Steel in Ed Wood. Sure, uh, and just just because I was great. just because I was not expecting it. I feel like a lot of them um, became less expi- exciting because WWE started advertising them. Like, make sure you catch blah, blah, blah in this new movie. And even though he only has like two lines in it. Well, one that was that's high up there because it was unexpected. I didn't know about it. And it blew my mind was Brett the Hitman Hart in The Simpsons. Right, right. I still think he's the only wrestler that's ever been in The Simpsons. Really? Especially They've never as had the rock as him, like as I don't, I don't think so. Oh man, that's a great and it, piece and it of would, trivia. And it would still sooner be like they're animating Dwayne Johnson, but they didn't get Dwayne Johnson, right? You know, they're, they're referencing like it's somebody him. else it's like, doing the voice. Well, yeah, it's like oh yeah, like how Dwayne Johnson does that right over there, and then he's doing a thing, but it's not him. Right, but Brett Hitman Hart is Brett Hart. Where I think he's was he shopping for a, a real estate? Yeah, yeah, he's buying a like house. The screaming sheik is next door. And, <laughs> yeah, um, and he's and he's very un Brett Hart in the episode too because he's it's, he has to do like a ooh that makes me mad ooh I'm so excited to get this right. Um, yeah, I was trying to find like a quick easy list. Of course, I couldn't have of wrestlers who have appeared on The Simpsons, but everything that I see is like. When pro wrestling has appeared on The Simpsons, and I'm like, no, that's not what the pro, that's not what the uh, the prerequisite is. But um, yeah, I mean, Bret Hart, that's great. I feel like if I had to pick something different, just that we haven't mentioned, uh, my favorite is probably a group of WWE superstars, and that was everybody involved in the opening of MacGruber. That might be my favorite. Mm. Big Show, Mark Henry, yeah. Kane. Chris Jericho and MVP, if I remember correctly. That oh, and maybe uh, uh, Great Khali, maybe he was in there. But the the assembling of his ultimate team, of yes. Mac- MacGruber's ultimate badass team, all being pro wrestlers and all being pro wrestlers and and having scenes, little individual scenes, introduce them. Some that are funny and some that are quirky and weird. Uh, that's probably probably my favorite, as far as like actual content. Um, I will also say that the young, the longest yard, uh, Nash 
and the longest yard is so good. But he started popping up in things where he would he just became He's a funny a actor. Role. Yeah. I'll tell you another one. I'll tell you another one. Um, that because I can, I'm thinking of many more now, and some are, are as you're saying, their roles or they are. I yeah. just didn't know going in, so it feels like, oh, look, they're there. Yeah. But one that I still love each each and every time is fucking Ludwig Borga in Die Hard with a Vengeance. <laughs> I don't remember that at all. He's uh, one of the cops where they uh, it's they they hand the bomb off to him. Okay, interesting. That's fun. And uh, yeah, L- Ludwig Borga in there. That's yeah. that's a solid one. I think that's one of the reasons why I like MacGruber was because I had no idea. I saw that in the movie theater and I had no idea that wrestlers were in it. And when the first one popped up, I think the first person he goes to might be Jericho, maybe. Or I think Kane? it's Jericho. Yeah, because they talk. Yeah, they yeah. talk back and forth. And, and I go, and like, oh my God, Jericho's goes, in gets this. the other ones. Yeah, and then he gets another wrestler. And I'm like, oh my God, wait, he's in a suit. And then I realize, wait a minute, these are all going to be wrestlers. And I think... Sitting in a movie theater as a wrestling fan watching a movie. That's just so fun. And then I won't spoil it in case you haven't seen the movie by now. Go see McGruber if you're a wrestling fan. Holy it, it's fuck. So Go funny. see that movie anyway. It's yeah, I, super fun. I, I was I was a person that did not know how great that movie was. I had heard oh, about really? the wrestling thing at one point. But I it was it was a thing like I don't and I've I've yeah. talked to friends since. I've I talked to another friend recently about it because I was mentioning the brothers Grimsby. Okay. I was like, you gotta see this. And uh that's like, well, what do I care about McGruber? The sketches weren't all that right. well, like they're kind of funny, but that's not a whole movie. And it's like, right. Right. It's not like a night at the Roxbury where no. they had to make something out of nothing. Nope. And it didn't work. This one, everything works. They just wrote a 90s action movie and made McGruber yep. the star of it. It didn't they didn't put and, they didn't make a movie of, about McGruber. They put McGruber in a movie. Yes. Yeah. And it's it's all the action you want and it's all the funny you want. Yeah. It's everything. And, and oh my God, is Val Kilmer exceptional in it? Just picture perfect, hilarious. Oh. Uh, by the way, Jake. Yeah, this is not a movie podcast. This is not a movie podcast. But if you uh, if you like hearing us talk about movies, wrestlers, uh, and you're a Powski, you should know there's a whole episode. I think where Scott and I did exactly this for like an hour. We just talked all about wrestlers and movies. Um, so if you're Powski, uh, make sure you try to check that out. And if you're not a Powski, get on that uh, over on the Patreon. Uh, but thanks so much, uh, Owen. Great question. Let's see what else we got on the hotline. This is Big Al from Parts Known. And a few weeks ago, I was on a call um, to leave a message for all the other listeners to um, maybe stop asking like questions about like what's going on currently in tel- uh, weekly television because you guys cover it anyway and ask some more sub- uh, obscured questions. So. I've been really glad and uh, entertained by all the weird questions that people have been asking, such as, hmm, what's a random one? What's your guys' favorite Razor Ramon, Ramon match, Razor Ramon, that was not at a WrestleMania? <laughs> big, big Al from Parts Known kind of laying the smackdown on other callers who uh, he doesn't like when they ask questions about the weekly product. Listen, I'm not going to co-sign that, uh, but you heard Big Al. <laughs> It made me laugh. <laughs> um, uh, what's your favorite race remote match that's not at WrestleMania? Hmm. Shit. Um, is it cheating just to say him versus the one, two, three kid on Raw? Because that's the most memorable match and the match that when I was a kid, I lost my absolute shit over because I couldn't believe that he lost and that one, two, three kid won. And I was like, this is the best ever. Or I'm sorry, that the cannonball kid won and became the one, two, three kid. No, I I feel like that's fine. I think my my favorite is one I was there for. This is the tail end of my fandom in that era. Um, was Royal Rumble nineteen ninety three was him and Bret Hart. Oh right, because because uh, I was big into Razor, and this is at Sacramento, and uh, like it was just I remember it being a fun match, and I haven't seen it in a very long time. I've that, seen we it do in that between, for a but it's okay. But I, I remember that was a that was a fun one. So yeah, that's probably feel, my favorite because I, I think I have more Scott Hall matches I love ra- ra- rather right. than Razor Ramon. That's because I was going to ask if like you know the stun gun match counts <laughs> or <laughs> well, that's Goldberg. Kevin Nash in the I know. match. Um, uh, but that's also because I missed out on a lot of that era of wrestling. I, so there's a lot of 
Razor Ramon matches where I know I should be watching. Right. But I just haven't seen them. But that's that's my go to for the title. Thanks so much. Uh, it was, he said his name was Big Al, right? I didn't misquote that. Big Al. Big Al from Parts Known. Big Al from, from Parts Known. Um, uh, uh, well, that'll do it for uh, the hotline this week. Thanks to each and every person who calls, even if you ask a question about the weekly show. Uh, we appreciate you. Make sure you get your hotline calls in uh, each and every week. It doesn't matter what time of day. You can do it anytime at 747-666-5606. Put it in your phone. It's 2020. Just, just program it into your phone book and put a picture Apologies of our to all the callers so that you can be like, Hey Siri, call the compadres. And then you can leave us a hotline call. Apologies to all the callers who left really lengthy voicemails that we couldn't get to, uh, saying how much they enjoyed or hated the solo compadre show. We just couldn't get to those calls. There, there were too many and they were too long. And, uh, I know your voices want to be heard. It's a time of voting. So sorry about that. We just couldn't get to you. Um, Scott, I said it before. It was my favorite episode I've ever listened to of Wrestling and Padres. It was last week's show with just you. Say what? You should write a rate and review on that on Apple Podcasts. I will. Um, and you know what the listeners should do? The same exact thing. They've been rating a review on Apple Podcasts for Wrestling and Padres. If you left one and you've been listening to the show for five years, do us a favor. Update it. Leave us another one. It'll bring you to the top. It'll update your review based on the fact that the show obviously has been through tons of changes, not just in the compadres themselves, but in the format and the style of the show and the, the presentation. Uh, please leave us a rating review if you haven't. That really means a lot to us. Um, just It takes two seconds. Do it over on Apple Podcasts. If you don't have an Apple phone, uh, but you have a computer, you can do it through iTunes. Uh, just simply Google how to do that. <laughs> and so you'll figure it out. Um, simply. But it, it is quite easy. If you just install iTunes, the program, you can leave reviews on all your favorite podcasts. Um, and uh, yeah, what else? Patreon stuff. Talk about the Patreon, Scott. Patreon's loaded with all kinds of good stuff. So you got your watch alongs, you got other shows, you got reviews. And uh, um, I think I'm going to have some extra time my, to myself here this week. So I'm going to watch some extra goodies and uh, talk about them. Probably do some video reviews because um, that's easier for me. <laughs> so uh, be on the lookout for those um, coming up this week or two. And uh, it's easy. Go to patreon.com slash compadres and uh, you'll find all kinds of good stuff there. And we got to thank our Patreon Palskis because we love them and they're helping keep on the lights in our living room and garage. AJ0314, Alex Pierce, who clearly fucked up everything in the draft, according to Jake. <laughs> Sorry about that. Alice Raider, Andrea Beeler, Ballista, Christine Gavin Provost, Gilbert Short, our own Shorty G, J.D. Monteith, Mast Llama, Mexican Stallion, Michael Beltran, Noe Cruz, Paisley Darts, Pete Garit, Stephen Vanoni, Tim Redbeard, Tina Keys, Tom Hader, Troy Moretti, Viani, and Zach Ayafuso. Thank you all so, so, so much. And uh, luckily, none of you were drafted. You all stayed right here. Uh, we we kept you on the Palskis. We knew how important it was, so we uh, we put all your names in the hat, and we picked all the names right back out of the hat and drafted each and every one of us. Makes sense. It's a good, easy way to do it. You can find me on social media, whether or not I actually do anything on it, at Scott Narver. Uh, check out YouTube.com slash On Your Mark Show. You heard me talk about it. You heard me talk about being the elite. I think this show is way better and funnier. You got the podcast as well for with Marky Extreme and Skeeter Skyflyer this week is the topic of Seamus. And uh, there's a deep dive into that, and I think it's super fun to listen, so check that out. And uh, yeah, I think that's I think that's about it. Please. Check out stuff with On Your Mark. Yeah, please listen to On Your Mark podcast. Listen, you can, like, li I, obviously he wants you to watch the shows and stuff, and that's fine. By the way, they've got, like, uh, like thousands of stuff on TikTok and, like, really popular and all these social media apps. But the most important thing is the podcast. Uh, on Your Mark uh, show.com you can find all sorts of fun stuff there um and uh what was this week's episode Seamus oh this was a fun yeah. one uh thoroughly enjoyed a lot of week. world building on that show I think yeah the Skeeter's learning about sex yes yeah, Skeeter's getting educated uh uh yeah really really it's, it's uh, honestly it's the best wrestling podcast in the world that's not hyperbole uh if you want wrestling uh content that runs adjacent to pro wrestling that's not just 
two people talking about wrestling because who would listen to anything like that? But if you want something that is in addition to the kayfabe and the hilarity uh, that wrestling could be on your mark is the place to get that. It's the best. Uh, have I perfed that enough? Did I meet your quota? I know you gave me that script. I, I know I went off script a little bit for it, Scott. Yeah, Good. I wrote some more us in there that you left out, but uh, I'll take it. All right. I felt like that was a dig on the fact that I say <laughs> a lot. And uh, quite frankly, you are correct, sir. Find me on Twitter at Liquid I do Jake. too. I do too. <laughs> and on Instagram at Jake Lloyd. Please check out Pinch if you have not watched it. It's my debut feature film. I've um, talked about it now for the most of, not, not really the most 2020, for about four or five months now. I'm going to talk about it for another year or two. Uh, so if you're, you know, I don't know what point you have to get broken in to actually go watch it, but just know I will break you. I'm like Drago. I will break you and you will watch Pinch. Please do that. Check it out. I promise you will enjoy it. It's super sweet, super easy to enjoy movie. Watch it with your loved ones. The, the holidays are coming up. Uh, it is a great movie to watch with family in the holidays. If you can't be there in person, do a watch party. Do it over Zoom. Uh, you know, it's available for digital purchase and rental on Amazon, as well as free to all Prime Video subscribers. If you have Amazon Prime, you have Pinch for free. And you know what? If you want to add one extra favor to the list of things you do for your old pal Jake Lloyd, go ahead and follow at Pinch Movie on social media. I dug out the hard drive, Scott, of Pinch, of all the shoots. And I'm going through and I'm finding outtakes, baby. That's what you got the Jay Quasto cut. That's the wait. What? Oh, it's just Jay Quasto. Um, yeah, actually, you know, what's funny. They, there's an extended scene of him and a uh, friend of the pod, Mike Bridenstein, uh, where they just sat at at uh, at the plate and just ad libbed a bunch of stuff. Uh, I'll, I'll add that to the to the 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 Instagram. I'm going to start posting videos that I have not seen myself or dug out in years. So that's kind of my uh free time job that I'm trying to do, even though time's a struggle. So that, you can find all that sure. stuff on uh, pinch, a, pinchmovie.com. Time is a fat circle. Time is a fat circle. That is true. Um, I think that's about it. Uh, anything else you want to tell the people before uh, you say goodbye forever? Look, wrestling, it's there. We love it. We're trying to cover it all. There's only so much we can do. We're only two people, if not three, if not one at different times. <laughs> but, uh, you know, there's always good stuff, and there's always stuff that goes, eh, what the fuck are they doing? But uh, the, it's all fun. It's all fun. We love it, and we love you for listening, and uh, we're going to be back next week with another super fun episode where finally everyone's been drafted. That's entertainment. It's Dragon Wagon.